Hi, everybody. I just came back from a movie about a young man looking just to find a home in his way in the world, in a strange new land with strange new people. Along the way, someone tries to kill and stuff him. Paddington. Ah, uh, yeah, so I just caught Paddington and came back from it a couple hours ago. It's like nearly four in the morning, <laughs> so I, I hung out with Mark a little bit afterwards. Um, so yeah, Paddington, it's uh, based off of, you know, the child children's character i know he's actually had a movie or two beforehand uh they were years ago but um it's a new version of the tale of paddington you know this little bear who can talk for some reason and you know people don't bat an eye at it really um my thoughts coming out of it this was a really cute film it was uh there's not Oh, I wouldn't get to seriously say there's a lot of things wrong with it. I mean, there's stuff that sticks out to you. It's like, what's with what choices and whatnot, but it's not horrible. It's not. It's very it's nice, heartwarming. I guess heartwarming isn't the right term. It's very nice. It's a nicely put together film. Um, it's You know, it's got a good happy ending to it, obviously. I mean, there's spoilers and stuff like this. So I'm not... By now, you probably know by the videos I put up. If there's spoilers, there will be a tag called Spoilers. Spoilers right there. Uh, but, um, well, on the title. Anyway, sidetracking. So it's this uh, Paddington who comes from the darkest part, the dark part of Peru. Um, or the darkest parts of Peru, as it calls. He's a species of bear, rare species of bear who um, apparently was not known by science, but apparently by the people in Peru, because there's a retirement home for old bears in Peru where people attend and they don't question the fact that talking bears live here and they live all Tarzan style in the trees. Never once is that ever, you know, it's, it's not questioned really at all. I mean, they're like, Oh my God, talking bear. But no people, people in this world take a talking bear really well. <laughs> like it's not the weirdest thing I've seen today. I live in England, so it's not the weirdest thing at all. Um, first and foremost, Paddington really is the heart of this movie. He's where the heart lies in this movie. He is the thing that draw keeps this movie going, the thing that you're focused on, and he is just adorable in his in his polite na naivete. He is really, really kind of charming and sweet to watch in reality. He, even when he is messing, he's messing up a lot. But it's because he just doesn't know how things work. You see in that, that trailer where he takes the toothbrushes and just takes the earwax, downs the freaking Listerine, and then has to fucking cool his mouth in the toilet, only to nearly drown, and then, you know, flood the bathroom. He sets fire to a, um, actually, technically doesn't set fire to anything. He blows up the kitchen because he turns the gas on the stove, and then a light, uh, and a spark hits, and just goes, poof. Uh, he's a really, he's, but he's still polite. He still understands that, you know, maybe, you know, if I'm doing this family harm, I should, you know, go. And yet he, the way he's very innovative at the same time, there's a scene where he's got this little hand vacuum and he's just like figuring it out for the first time, cleaning up and just, and then when he's escaping Nicole Kidman, who I'll, I'll get to, I'll get to Nicole Kidman. She's, I wouldn't say one of the things wrong with the movie, but she is definitely in my, there's three, I think there's a new category I have to put in when talking to pills just to sidetrack. There's, um, things I like. Things I dislike, and then there's things I just don't know what the fuck to think. <laughs> the, the, the WTF moments of film, I think, may have to be a new segment on my reviews. But, um, no, he takes, he's an escaper, and he's in this, basically, this furnace shaft. It's uh, almost like a, I think it's like a crematorium kind of furnace. It's like, a, it's this metal chimney with the with flames on the bottom and he's like how the hell am i gonna do this? and then you see he's got these two these little handbags he just starts missioning impossible you even get the mission impossible music which is do 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 it's actually really funny uh they they cut in they use a soundtrack a lot um it does not always work in my mind because i feel like they're just having a song there to have the song there and that instance though it did work it, it did i did find it funny for that um i was I was the only one in the theater, by the way, for this opening screening for Paddington. That, well, actually, there was two showings. I didn't catch the 7 o'clock one. I caught the 9.30 one. And, yeah, I'm not surprised there was no one but me in a 9.30 showing of Paddington at opening night, on pre-screening night. So, I'm not terribly shocked by that. And, you know, to be fair, I 
I would at least like to have at least one or other, two other people in there with me, just, you know, so we could all have been like, oh, that's kind of nice, oh, that's stupid, and so forth and so on. But no, uh, Paddington. Paddington, yeah, he is where the center of the story lies. But also the family that uh, it basically takes him in. They are really – they're a nice family. I mean they got their own stereotypes and stuff like that, but they are nice in their own way. I mean let me see if I got this right here. Uh, Agatha Clyde, it's not – what? Uh, I, I don't believe that is correct because I know that was Nicole Kidman. Uh, but anyway – uh, did, 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 I'm just getting making. Oh, there we go. We have um, Hugh Bonneville. It plays Henry Brown, the father of the household. He's this very overprotective. He's a risk analyst. He analyzes the risks of things, and that's your profession. And he's unfortunately taken that into his parenting, where he's kind of an overprotective father and all that. And there's some tropes of him getting over that, and it's nice. And you know, there's a lot of cliche in here. I'll say right now, there's a lot of cliche in this movie, but for the kind of movie it is, it works just fine. It's not one of those things where the cliche is going to, you know, bother you. He, so he, And so he's the, you know, the I wouldn't even call him uptight, per se. He's a little uptight, but he's more just overprotective. That being said, we get, he, <laughs> he has his moments where he breaks out of his shell. We find out he had a, you know, a past where he was an adventurous, then the kids came and he kind of lost that to be protective and all that. But... <laughs> He, he regains that over the film, and once he's in drag, basically, because I'm like, oh, British humor, guy in drag, of course. And um, the guy hits, uh, the guy hits on him. <laughs> it's, it, it was quite, it was actually quite, you know, especially when he shows him his ID. It's just like, hey, so you got rid of, so, hmm, it's like, I lost some weight. And the uh, laser, and the arm prosthetic, and just pegs him in the knee. It's like, you don't feel any of that. My God. Well, to get, carry on, I'm just going to be in the toilet. Ah! <laughs> uh, what, Mary Brown uh, is, is the wife. Uh, Sally Hawkins is the actress who played her. She was actually really nice. Um, she was, she's, she's definitely more trusting and outgoing, which can bite people in the ass, but it works in her advantage in the end for that. And it was very well put together how she goes. She writes like adventure novels and stuff like that. Excuse me. And... You know, Pagden comes, you know, hijinks ensue, and she's, like, trying to figure out the face of her hero, but she can't picture it, and then, to, you know, her husband suddenly becomes badass, so I was like, my hero, whoop. Uh, I will say, I wasn't over, and in the fir at first, um, Madeline Harris, who plays the daughter, uh, Judy, not the actress was bad, the actress was fine. I did not like the character at first, because she's just that standard and in Pang, he makes a good uh, point when he's writing a note to his aunt. Um, oh, she's suffering from a condition called embarrassment. It's like, oh, God, this is so embarrassing. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. I'm like, just shut up, you little tween. <laughs> which she stops saying that, which makes her more likable afterwards. And then um, there's the uh, son who's played by Samuel Jocelyn, who he's actually really – I liked him. He's He wants to be an astronaut and – He's, you know, very adventurous and outgoing. And, you know, as far as like, no, don't do that. And he's got, so basically he's got all these safe toys and building connects and stuff like that. Really impressive stuff for a kid's age. Um, so here's that. I mean, also the effects work on Paddington, I should get to real quick. Really good effects work. I mean, I wouldn't go so far as saying like Dawn or, or Rise of the Planet of the Apes kind of effects, but, or like, you know, Gollum or Rocket or Gru kind of effects, but really good effects for this type of movie. I didn't, I didn't. Not once did I think, oh, I'm watching the fact. I'm like, no, I'm watching this bear. And he's a cute little bear. Um, we see his aunt and uncle um, briefly. Uh, his uncle apparently bites it. That's where he actually gets his hat from. His The hat was his uncle's. Um, which I don't get to see. Oh, first off, there's an earth. What happens is there's an earthquake in the jungle. Which I know that earthquakes happen in the jungle. I'm not saying that. But the Richter scale of this earthquake seems very unlikely even for Peru, even for the darkest parts of Peru. Peru isn't it's not like the San Andreas Fault or even like Chile or something like that where Peru is located on a major fault line to have that kind of earthquake where it levels an entire forest. Um so that was a little weird. And then the the uncle just stares at their home being destroyed and dies because of that. He didn't move because he was like in shock. Or maybe he just had a heart attack on the spot. I don't know. Um, so there's that. Uh, there's a lot of inconsistencies I could go over. But real quick, a few that were stuck out in my mind. Paddington is writing letters to his mother, or excuse me, his aunt, 
because his mother and father are dead at the beginning of this. And um, a whole while I'm watching this, I'm like, I, how are you getting these letters out? Are they are these people who right now some of them aren't necessarily fine with you mailing these out to you or what? I don't get that. And then <laughs> the father, there's one thing. Okay, there's a father overcoming now kind of the whole safety overprotective thing and then there's what this guy does and this guy you know it's like his son wanted to be an astronaut so they're building a rock in his room it's like okay that's acceptable it's like Are you sure that's gonna work I'm sure that's good enough it's like son if we want this uh, to work properly we need to put in all the nitroglycerin and right there i had to stop and go i literally just said in the theater because there's no one else in the theater so i'm free to talk as much as i want which is there's times where i wish there was other people in the theater other times, I'm so glad there aren't others. So I'm just like, what? Where did you Where did you get nitroglycerin? My, my grandfather worked nitroglycerin in a factory where you made nitroglycerin. He could get some, but not the levels where you could make a working rocket to that degree. <laughs> because, because he's got this mason jar full of nitroglycerin that he's just pouring down the fucking cylinder of this rocket and it just goes off and it's destroying the room i'm like where did you get this you're a risk analyst you have no way of acquiring nitroglycerine what underworld connections do you have because i want to see that story now make that for the sequel <laughs> the overprotective risk analysis father getting over that and making cd underworld deals just to make his kids smile <laughs> That'd be a great sequel. And Paddington's got to get him out of the. Paddington's just got a gun at the mobster. Um, some things I didn't quite like. I mean, and all those inconsistencies I just said. Not that I, hate, I didn't hate them. I'm just they just stuck out to me. Like why? And there's many other things. The whole he's got a mar Paddington's got a marmalade addiction, and he's eating a lot of marmalade sandwiches, which is I don't like marmalade myself, but. I guess bears love, uh, according to this, bears love marmalade. Always have an emergency marmalade sandwich in your hat. So says him, because that way he'll protect you from Nicole Kidman. Who, okay. Now, I said there's things I hate, things I dislike. And there's not much I dislike. Some of the soundtrack a little iffy. Some of the inconsistencies were eh. But overall, I really like this movie. And then there's the what the fuck moments. And by what the fuck, I mean, what the fuck is Nicole Kidman doing in this movie? Not as, not because she's the antagonist. Because it's understandable she needs to be the antagonist. I mean, what the fuck is this character doing this movie? The character she plays is a museum taxidermist who's obsessed with finding the talking bears that her father let go in the expedition when he found them. Because, oh, we could have been ranched, so I mean, found it in vengeance and, you know, proved to the world and all this stuff. And I'm like, ow. Okay, first off, What's the point of stuffing a talking bear to prove talking bears exist when you killed the talking bear so it can't talk to prove it's a talking bear? That does not follow any fucking line of logic. Because this woman is insane. This woman does not belong in this movie whatsoever. This woman belongs in a horror movie called The Taxidermist. I'm not kidding. We first meet her and she's going to stuff a little marmoset monkey. It's live. And she's just like, you know, adding, she talks about adding, you know, creatures to her collection. And it's kind of eerie and unsettling how this character is being portrayed. She literally is asking the cab driver that brought into the house at one point to give her information on the bear. He says, cab is code of conduct. We later see her, her hanging him above a pier from his legs, talking about, you know, she has a code of conduct where she likes to take things apart, body parts apart, start from the house, and then get to the more fleshy bits. And I'm like, what the fuck? You're talking about dismembering people right now. You threatened to stuff the family at the... Uh, you are... What the? You don't belong in this movie. You need a. You need your own movie where you're like just this psychotic, horrible human being because you are. And I can't say it's bad because if that were in its own movie, that would be really interesting. I would be okay with seeing that movie. That would be fascinating. She just doesn't fit. She's way too dark for this movie. <laughs> She honestly is. The scene where she, where he's trying to find the explorer, basically the explorer who, you know, found his, uh, who his uncle and aunt met, and 
I was trying to find a home with him. And as I said, that's her father. When we find it, we hear the woman's voice on the mean like, oh, okay, that's her. Obviously, her father was that guy because they didn't reveal until close to the end that that's what the case was. And then I'm like, now, maybe he goes inside the house. That's when it got eerie. She's got this long, slow walk down her stairs in her high heels. So they're clicking, slow, click, click. And she's just having that long, methodical, like, model of talking, uh, talking. She's speaking slow and methodically and calculatingly, like, I have you now. It's like, what? Th this woman did not belong in this movie. She need, it's like, they just took her. It's like, okay, well, um, we need, we need a bag. I just go into the random roster movie, which you haven't made yet, and just pick a character out. Okay, we've got a psychotic taxidermist whose main goal makes no sense. Do it. Do it now. <laughs> And she gets a good comeuppance, especially for a kid's film. It's it's perfectly fine. That being said, her comeuppance, she gets no jail time. She gets, she gets community service in a petting zoo, which she hated. Her father opened a petting zoo. She hated that, and that's her penance, and she's got covered in manure and stuff like that. It's, it's funny. It's cute. It's fitting. But that being said, this woman threatened to kill people and stuff them. No. This woman belongs in a psych ward. This woman belongs locked up for all her end of her days. So that part I don't agree with, but overall, the movie as a whole is very nice. I liked it. Um, overall rating, I think I'd probably give this a good solid eight. It's a good family film. Uh, I mean, a couple problems aside, you know, all that stuff. And again, the Nicole Kidman character, that, that character, I'd honestly say, might scare some of you. I mean, not overly like an eight, something like eight or above. Yeah, hell, even six or above would probably be okay with it. But I'm talking about like a four to five year old maybe even like a six year old might find that character a little creepy she literally has him drugged at one point on the table and about to dissect him from there i'm like what the fuck oh <laughs> i'm like i'm not necessarily i wasn't like necessarily scared i'm just like this character is scary because of the context of this film she she's too scary for this film i think she's really psychotic um but regardless, yeah, I give this a solid eight as a family film. Absolutely, anyone um, who wants to see it uh, with their kids, I say I would recommend it. Um, I just advise that the Nicole Kidman character is a little on the dark side. <laughs> um, and then you know what? Any adult wants to see it. It's not a bad set if you want to just kill some time and see everything else in the theater. Um, so let's see. I got technically I got only two new trailers, but I didn't talk about two of them because i haven't got them in, on big screen yet so we'll go uh, go down the list uh first one i got was strange magic the new lucas film film lucas films film um lucas films movie um it's like fern gully meets that epic movie meets a bunch of other crap it does not look good it does not um there's a lot of just random fucking songs they stuck in there. And it's actually characters singing the song at points. The prince is like Elvis. The villain is... I don't even know what the villain's supposed to be. If he's an evil fairy, a troll, or something like that. I don't know. All I know is it does not look great. Uh, there's a, I mean, the animation does not look terrible. It looks standard. Maybe a little above standard at some points. But also it looks kind of like a video game at points. Um... It does not look the worst, but that comes out next week. And next week, which I'll say in a little bit what my next movie this this week will be. And next week I'll talk, which, you know what, I'll just, I'll save what I see next week for my movie news segment. Well, maybe my, maybe next review I do plus movie news, I'll talk about that. Which I'll have some updates about what, uh, about this channel after, mm, on movie news. I'll talk about the updates for the channel and some things that will be going on in the future. But, Regardless, Strange Magic looks very mediocre. <laughs> at, I wouldn't say at best, but it looks very mediocre. I might be surprised. That might be amazing, but who knows. Um, next one, Hillsong, Let Hope Rise. Um, I, is Hillsong a, a band, like a Christian rock band or something like that that I don't know about? Because I saw this once before, and, I, it, and the last time I saw it, I thought, saw, thought the same thing I thought last time, this time. Because I, I, it's been a while. I don't only vaguely remember the trailer the first time. It's like a documentary, like live music thing about a group called Hillsong. I thought it was about U2 at first because they hit me line about every Sunday. I'm like Sunday Blaze Sunday. I'm like, no, this is someone else. I don't know. It's 
it's a music thing. I don't care that much about it. I like music. I just don't care about seeing it on the big screen. <clears throat> Listen to musical. Musical. Excuse me. Uh, I got the. I got a new trailer for Home. Um, that what the movie? It's a movie about an alien who's part of a race that does not like him, and they begin to just go from planet to planet trying to find a home. He gets kicked out, and he finds a girl on Earth, and they bond, and you know, they the aliens come back try to invade Earth. Obviously, they'll save the day, whatnot. <clears throat> um, at first, I'm, at first time I saw this, I'm like, oh yeah, I kind of like the idea of this movie. Um, like, cause Steve Martin's the voice of kind of the bad guy, the head, the king of the. I don't know what they're called. They said what they were called, but whatever. And then I heard the voice of the main character called O, and the joke is, you know, anytime he walks in, they go, oh, oh, you know, they, so they, they assumed his name was given O. His given name was O. And then I kept hearing this guy talk, and I'm like, no, that's not who I think. That's not it is. He's voiced by Sheldon for The Big Bang Theory. Now, if you like The Big Bang Theory, if you like Sheldon and all that stuff, I'm not going to hate on you or anything like that. I can't stand that character. That character drives me the fucking nut, the fucking up the wall. It just, I can't stand the character of Sheldon. He's such an irritant. Because th there are people like that, and people like that irritate the hell out of me. That was really socially awkward, just don't have any sort of, can't function and, and I don't even call it, say, normal society, because that's not fair to people. Those people who are so, who are irritatingly socially awkward and don't understand how they're wrong. Don't understand how they're affecting them. People like that bug the hell out of me. And don't even see, and don't even see what they're doing as cons, like, of what they're doing is wrong to people. The fact that they're irritating people to the point where they're unlikable and the people that they're affecting people's lives in a negative way. That, that's the best way to put it. The fact that they're so socially awkward and so unapologetic about it that it affects someone in a negative way. I I don't like people like that. That People like that bug the fucking hell out of me. But it's a, I don't want to go on a rant again because I went on a rant in, ex, in my Exodus review about people and their false beliefs. So I'm just I'll, – I'll leave it at that. The Sheldon stereotype, I hate. I hate the Sheldon stereotype. And I'm not even a big fan of that actor. I'm not, because the only thing I've seen him in right now is Sheldon in that commercial he's doing for those, um, uh, is it Samsung or some other, the technology technology commercials. And I don't even like him in those. He's even more annoying in those than he is a Sheldon. And I'm surprised at that. Uh, I, can't, I can't watch The Big Bang Theory because of that character. If they didn't have that character, I might be able to tolerate The Big Bang Theory. I really could, could possibly tolerate it. Um... So I'm like hearing his voice and I'm like, oh god, no. <sighs> so I'm really torn on that movie. Because at one point it looks just generally okay. It looks better than Strange Magic, I'll give it that. It looks beyond mediocre. It looks passable. It looks okay. Uh, Steve Martin's the voice of the main guy, like villain, head of their people, so I'm like, okay, that's something. And then you got that, I'm like, I am so fucking torn with this movie. So I don't know. But I'm not as torn, but I'm nowhere near as torn about the last movie called Underdogs. This movie looks like shit. I'm not going to even sugarcoat it. This movie looks terrible. <clears throat> now, bear with me. If you have not heard of this movie, give me one second. Because <clears throat> I want to try to compose myself when I say this. A boy beats another boy at foosball. Little table hockey. Uh, excuse me, table soccer. And, you know, he's the greatest foosball player in the land, in the town. Uh, but, you know, years later, he's kind of got the girl and stuff like that. The guy he beat comes back as a pro soccer player and says he bought the town. The only way to stop him from you know, leveling the place where he got humiliated as a kid, vengeful much, um, is to have the foosball champion guy beat him at soccer. The, uh, that's not the dumb part. And that's, that's pretty dumb as it is, but that's not the dumb part. The dumb part comes for when he's so he's just so sad not knowing what to do with us. One of his tears falls and drops on one of his broken foosball players. And all the foosball players come to life to aid him in his quest to beat the douchebag in soccer. Are you fucking joking me? 
that, that movie is got to be one of the worst looking pieces of crap I've seen in a while. I don't even think I'd be wrong in saying I, I'm. I'm not even gonna say I could be completely wrong on that. No, that movie looks like crap. The lip syncing for that for the CGI is just terrible. The eff CGI isn't even that good for. Like, I don't even know if it's a Pixar or a DreamWorks or anything. I don't. I can't remember which one that is. All I know is they need to th rethink some shit on that because that looks terrible. I, I, the only one, even after I recognized them, the cast, which I'll at least give them credit, they were trying to go like me for a different cast, a fresh cast. John Leguizamo is one of the little guys. That's it. And it just looks terrible. It, and I really don't, I really hope I don't have to go see that one. Um, and I'll do a quick update right now on that. Um, I'll explain a little bit more in movie news this week. I'm going to be limiting my movies uh, as of next week to one movie a week for a time being. For the next couple of months, it's going to be about one movie a week instead of like the two, one to two movies I've been kind of seeing. <clears throat> there will still be movie news. Uh, there will not be any um, top five for a while just because of that. And I'll get more into detail that later in uh, this week in movie news. But um, yeah, so there's that. So if there's something better playing against that, I'll probably end up seeing the better movie. <laughs> Hell, fucking, I don't know, Alice in Wonderland 2 could be playing against that. I'd probably see that first off, it'd probably be better, not by much, and it'd be a more entertaining review. <laughs> but still, I hope I don't have to see that. It does not look good. So yeah, that's all I got. Again, I get Paddington about an 8 <coughs> out of 10. Excuse me, I've been talking about it a little bit. I don't have any beverage with me this time around, <laughs> so I can't uh, assume my throat. But um, yeah. 8 out of 10 for Paddington. I do recommend anyone who wants to see it to go see it. It's a very charming little film. So thanks for watching. I will see you for the next one, which I will probably be seeing the new uh, Chris Helmsworth movie tomorrow, uh, Black Hat. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.